They messed with the wrong coach. Where exactly to draw the line between church and state? Prayer in public schools has been hotly debated in this country for years at this point. Now, a Washington State high school football coach wants the U.S. Supreme Court to greenlight his personal prayer on the field after games, even if joined by students. One of the most important school prayer cases in more than a decade involves a football coach at a small town public high school in Washington State and whether he can say a prayer at midfield after the game. If I didn't stand up for what I believed in, how could I teach these young men to stand up for what they believe in. Good for you. I kind of look in the mirror and, and sit there and say, hey, I want you guys to kill yourself every single day and on Friday night and on Mondays, you know, during a football game and then be that hypocrite that when things get tough for me, not, I'll just kick back and relax and shy away from that. No, I had to stand up for what I believed in and I had to set that example to them that when things get tough, no matter how bad it is, you still stand up and do what is right. In the West right now, we're experiencing um, some, some, some difficulties, some inconveniences. They're inconveniences that could turn into persecution in the future. Uh, for example, laws about homosexuality and transgender, um, you know, certain laws that relate to the family and the rights of parents, certain things like this could eventually lead to more persecution in the West. I think we need to be aware of things that are changing in Western culture that could very quickly lead to the persecu persecution of Christians in the West. Coach Joseph Kennedy did not know that a few seconds of prayer of thanks to God would cost him his job and lock him in years of legal battle all the way to the Supreme Court. This is a right for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're this religion or that religion or have no faith whatsoever. Everybody has the same rights in America. Who exactly is Coach Joe Kennedy? Joe Kennedy was a high school coach at Bremerton High School, Seattle, Washington State. After each game, he would kneel and pray on the 50-yard line. Coach Kennedy would kneel and pray whether he lost or won the game. Players from his team and even the opponent would occasionally join him voluntarily. He did this for over seven years. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. He realized that the team really needed some um, good role models for these kids to be better young men. Not the X's and O's parts, but how to make uh, the character, uh, team building, and leadership part of it. So that's where I came in, and they offered me a job, and uh, yeah, I took it, and I from that moment on, I was uh, praying uh, every single game that we had after every football game on the 50 yard line, you know, win or lose, give thanks to God. Wasn't anything real special. It was just a, you know, quick little 15, 30 second prayer, thanking God for what those guys just did on the field. A couple of the kids came up and said, coach, what were we doing out there, you know, after the game? And I was like, thanking God for what you guys did. It was no big deal. It's who I am. It's what I do. And they said, well, can we join you? You know, we're Christians, can we join you? I said, this is America. Absolutely, you can do whatever the heck you wanna do. So a couple of the kids came out, you know, and then a couple more came out. And before I knew it, we had the whole team out there. And you know, this went on for years and you know, it wasn't like overnight. And next, you know, as, as it went on, then we started, uh, the kids started inviting the other team to join us. They were like, coach, can we do have the other team join us? And I was like, you're the leaders of this team. This is your call. This is your team. And they started inviting the other team. And the last year I coached, we had every single school in the district joining us out on the 50 yard line, praying really? with us. This is in Seattle. In Seattle. Obviously, the devil hates anything good, and Coach Kennedy's faith was about to be tested. In 2015, the school began investigating Coach Kennedy, and ultimately, the school athletic director told Kennedy to stop praying with students, citing the school district policy regarding religious expression. Dumbfounded at, at the time, I had no idea what was going on. They brought in their lawyers to make sure I was doing everything correct, and you know, they, they gave me this warning. The athletic director said, hey, make sure you don't pray, you know, after the game. And I'm like, you know, I'm a rebellious kind of guy. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do about it? I was a Marine for 20 years. You're going to take away my First Amendment rights? No, that's not happening. And he says, you better not do it because the principal's asking about it. And so I'm sitting there going, hmm, what's the worst that could happen? 
And we had one of our coaches was a lawyer, and he says, well, they could fire you. Satan is the liar king. He has a massive supernatural force of demons against whom we wrestle. His children are liars. The kingdom of darkness is known by its lies. This has penetrated the most sacred halls of our government, the Supreme Court. God is out. Prayer is out. The Ten Commandments are out. Get those off the wall. The Bible is out. Blasphemy is in. Immorality is to be protected. In fact, laws are, be, are to be made and enforced to normalize perversion. Coach Kennedy stopped praying with the students to appease the school and continued kneeling for 30 seconds after each game on the 50-yard line alone. Still, the school was unhappy about that and wanted him to stop praying altogether. And so the first time they said, okay, just don't pray with the kids. And I said, okay. So what I did is I went to go back to doing what I was going to do originally. It wasn't to include the kids. That wasn't my purpose of doing it. It was to thank God. So as I went out there to do that, the other team joined me. I waited till my team went off of the sidelines to do the fight song. And next thing I know, I have all these people around me and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? I'm sitting there going, oh God, don't, this is part of my prayer. God, don't let this be my football team. So I finished up my prayer. I stood up and I'm looking into the eyes of all these kids with the wrong color jerseys on. And I realized the other team joined me in the prayer. My team was stole over doing the fight song and I was kind of lost, like what what's, what's happening here? Were there coaches with them? Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that was the point where the school district said, oh, well, you're still praying and people are joining you. You can't do that. Coach Kennedy had to make a hard choice. Honor the Lord by praying privately on the 50-yard line as he had always done, or follow the school's order. Persecution is different than just plain old suffering or just plain old death. Persecution is a suffering that we endure at the hands of our adversary, specifically because of his hatred of our Lord and Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what that means is, while suffering is something that is inevitable and every man will suffer, it's not so with persecution. Persecution can be avoided. All you have to do is compromise. Well, after the next game, Kennedy skipped his usual prayer, but that didn't settle well with him. He felt guilty and regretted his decision. Before he got home, Coach turned around and returned to the football stadium after everyone had left the field. He knelt by the 50-yard line and prayed, asking God for forgiveness for not doing what he should have done. These kids mean everything to me because I was a troubled youth and I wanted to reach out and help these kids in Bremerton, kind of give back to my community, which, you know, I terrorized when I was a kid. The next game, he resumed his usual end-of-the-game prayer. Consequently, the school officials placed him on leave and did not rehire him for the following football season. And so that's when the school districts, they, they came to a head and they said, if you do, if you pray anymore, we're going to take the next step. And so they did. They took the next step and they said, you're on administrative leave. And then at the end of the year, we have our evals. Yeah, I wanted to come back. You know, I, I'm missing the, half the football season. So... And then they said, do not rehire, which is a death sentence. I mean, basically, we don't want this guy anymore. You can't, you can't coach here at Bremerton anymore because I prayed. Sadly, this is the America we live in today. One nation under God, a nation that claims in God we trust, has become so intolerant of religious expression. It's very easy to see how changing worldviews changing ideas and changing laws uh, in the West could easily and very quickly lead to the persecution of Christians. As for Coach Kennedy, the battle was not over. It had just begun. A true American hero is always a fighter, not a quitter. But this time, Coach was fighting a righteous cause. He was fighting for religious freedom that is waning so fast in America. In 2015, Kennedy sued the Bremerton School District, alleging that the school violated his religious freedom and the constitutional guarantee of religious freedom.
After seven long years of legal battle, in January 2022, the United States Supreme Court decided to take up the case. So you're not allowed to pray before a football game. It, it was, I thought it was horrible. Kennedy's case has been cheered by top Republicans and star NFL quarterbacks like Kirk Cousins and Nick Foles, who have told the justices in court documents the power of prayer promotes good sportsmanship. In today's oral arguments, justices pressed both sides on where to draw the line between school official and private citizen. Conservative Justice Brett Kavanaugh questioning attorney Richard Katsky of Americans United for Separation of Church and State, which is representing the school district. How far does that go? Do you know, coach uh, does the sign of the cross right before the game. Uh, is that, could a school fire the coach for the sign of the cross right before the game? If the coach is doing it while not making himself the center of attention at the center of the field, it's perfectly fine. Well, I don't know how we could write an opinion that would draw a line based on not making yourself the center of attention as the head coach of a game. The case could impact public school playing fields nationwide and could decide whether Kennedy can coach again and take a knee in prayer for his Bremerton Knights. In June 2022, the Supreme Court ruled on the case in a 6-3 decision. The Supreme Court has ruled that a football coach at a public high school did have the right to pray on the field after games. In a 6-3 decision, Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch writing for the majority, respect for religious expressions is indispensable to life in a free and diverse republic. Whether those expressions take place in a sanctuary or on a field, and whether they manifest through the spoken word or a bowed head. I, I was a little shocked at first because everybody said, there it is, and everybody was reading it, and nobody was telling me what the heck anything <laughs> said. So I was so glad the lawyers finally told me. And it was just a big sigh of relief that, you know, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I think this is a, just a great day for every American. It really shows, uh, you know, the diversity and the inclusion of exactly what America is about. Coach Kennedy is expected to resume his coaching position at Bremerton High School by March 2023. While we celebrate the victory God gave Coach Kennedy, we're equally saddened by the erosion of religious freedom in America. As much as it hurts to be away from them and to having to be, you know, go through all of this and, you know, a huge expense to my family and, you know, the school and everybody else, that this is absolutely worth it. If you're not willing to stand up for what is right, then why are we even here? And if I can't be the one to set that example for them, then, you know, who, who's going to step up to for the next fight? That Folks, our only hope is Jesus Christ. The days ahead may become much more terrible, but we urge you to put your faith in Jesus. And even if he chooses to allow trials and tribulations in your life, know that he will never leave you or forsake you. 